The title of this message this morning is The Invisible Force. So no matter what's going on, no matter how wonky or wonderful your week happens to be, there's something more going on. Let me read this little quote from Ernest Holmes. He said, there is a power within you right now. You don't have to wait. It's there right now. There's a power within you greater than you have ever known. It, is ne it knows no defeat, and it is never depleted. That's the power that's in us now. Now, because we have some practitioners from some time ago, and we're honoring uh, Michael and, and Adele now, one of the ways that Ernest Holmes taught practitioners, taught the practitioner, connecting with spirit, knowing about the power that's available. He would always use the seed and the soil. He'd use that analogy. So just imagine there's a little tiny insignificant seed, just a little tiny speck of a seed deep in the soil. And that seed seems really insignificant. It doesn't really matter. Yet that seed has the potential to grow into a mighty oak tree and bring shade and shelter to generations to come. It sits in that soil right there. It needs the soil to give it what it needs and a few other conditions. But that's the same with us. We have that place in us that holds potential and creativity and that invisible force and power right there. The soil that holds the seed, which is us, the soil which is the potential and the creativity and the possibility that's out there, is what the plant grows in and what we grow with. And that's the soil. We need to work with it, but we need to claim it and harness it. Why then do so many people feel exhausted, weak, stressed out, why is that when that power is right there? It comes because we're not aware of the truth of life. We're too busy out there. Because that little seed, that spark in us, transcends the physical. It goes way beyond the physical. And we have to take time to take a step back from getting so involved in this crazy world. You know, we have blind spots to all that power that's there. We may call it God, we may call it compassion, we may call it creative potential. We get a blind spot. Do you know there are some people that put off being happy? <laughs> Can you believe that? With all this potential and power and goodness and love and everything that's there. Michael, you read it in your reading this morning. All that wonder that's here right now. They put it off because they're going to wait until they get a bigger bank account, a perfect partner, a better home. Um, give me something else. <laughs> better health. Oh, my gosh. Who forgot that after being in ER this week? Um, uh, yeah, what else? Oh, more ed education, yes. Oh, I already have that one, so forget that. <laughs> That's the joy of everything. Um, yeah, but we put it off, a oh, travel. And you think, oh, I'm not happy because... But when Michael was reading from, I'm not sure what book you were reading from, Michael. This Thing Called Life, one of Ernest's best books. You can't expect something or someone else to make you happy. Ernest Holmes said, let us waste no time further, no further time looking for the secret of happiness or the key to happiness. The door is already open and all may enter. I was looking in the science of my magazine from last month, and it was telling a story uh, from the book Tuesdays with Maury. And Maury was very ill, and he was passing. Uh, he, was, he was dying of ALS. And his dear friend was talking to him, and he said, Maury, what would you do with 24 healthy, wonderful hours right now? And Maury said, I'd exercise. I'd go for a swim. I'd have lunch with some friends. I'd take a walk in my garden. I'd have some lunch with my friends. And I would go look at the colors of the trees. Why do we put happiness off? 
It's there. We can be happy. We just have to make the space for it. You know, Jesus, when his disciples were behaving poorly, they did sometimes. They lacked faith and trust. And when his disciples were behaving badly, he told them um, this story. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. If God so clothes the grasses of the fields, which are alive today and tomorrow thrown in the oven, will God not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry. Do not worry what you, we will eat or what we will drink or what we will wear. For indeed, God knows that you need all these things. What we need to do to find happiness is to expand our faith. Albert Einstein said, there's one decision that will influence your entire life forever. Do you believe we live in a friendly universe or a hostile one? Do you believe God is for us or against us? Do you believe that life is working with us or not? It's a big choice we make. I know we have those fleeting moments. Oh, where are you, God? No, no. If we can't find God, guess who moved? It's not God. But, you know, I know we have those moments where we win. Why is this happening to me? What's going on? It's frustrating. It's depressing. It's all of that. Right. But we can change in this and any moment. No matter how hard things have been, no matter how hard, this invisible force is present. It's forgiving and it's renewable constantly. It's constantly there that we can use it. But that's the trick. We have to use it. We have to be there and use it. We need, I believe, all of us to refocus, recalibrate our consciousness. Remember, we're on an evolutionary path of growth, right? We're growing and expanding here until we're ready for the next plane, and we keep doing it. We grow and grow until we're in that place of oneness and allness and connection, and we don't question it. We need to recalibrate that. And we think, okay, well, I'll do that. Uh-huh. I will do that. Uh-huh. I will do that. Uh-huh. We can do it right now. You know, the quickest way... Um, it was um, Wayne Dyer who said, silence is experiencing the presence of God. Now, it doesn't matter what's going on in the outside world. You can be at a noisy carnival. You can be anywhere. And you can find a place of silence and peace and calm within. It's up to us. Or you can be at a silent retreat and your mind is racing. Where are you finding the most peace and comfort and possibility? It's up to us. It's our choice what we do. So besides when somebody asks you how you're feeling, you just say groovy. I have another thing. Use your breath to center in and take the silence. Take in that silence. Then composer Johannes Brahms said, I always contemplate my oneness with the creator before commencing to compose anything. Are we that dedicated? Are we that focused that we tune into the presence? In the heart, when Gretchen was singing, in our heart is where it starts. That's where God communicates in the language of feelings. We have to get connected to the heart and then move out from there. It's the heart that starts. So take the time to go in and feel that presence. Be that little seed. Be the seed. And know that there's so much you don't know yet inside of you. So much ready to be expressed and explored. It's really quite exciting to sit there and know that. Um, Ernest Holmes goes on to say about this invisible force, that this force is not about just personal gain. It's about love and service, because our actions and what we do make a difference in the world. 
whether we know it or not. When was the last time you had someone come up to you and thank you for something you didn't even realize you did? Because it's just something we do automatically. We've trained ourselves. They thank you for that. You know, I bet Kathy Jolene doesn't know I thank her almost every day because her book is right there on my desk. You know, people do things in the world and you don't know, realize how your legacy is passed on and on and on. And we get to do that. We get to really feel that connection and power just by recognizing that possibility is in us right here and right now. You know how when, um, I'm trying to think who says that poem, if it's Rumi or Afez, it must be Rumi, I don't know. The door is wide and open, the breeze, the breeze at dawn has secrets to tell you. Is it Rumi? Yeah, yeah what, I guess I've put Rumi out of my mind. <laughs> but yes, um, Rumi says, you must ask for what you really want. When we get to that doorway where the two worlds meet, we've got to ask for what we really want. And I think it boils down to not things, but feelings. We want peace, happiness, joy, compassion, love, connection. That's what we want. So just imagine right now, you tap into that place within you, like that little seed that's ready to grow into something. Uh, you know, we don't have to be a mighty oak tree, but we can be a person who has their hand out to help someone else. That can do more good than anything in the world. Um, Mother Teresa said, if you share a smile, you can heal the world by sharing a smile, just letting people, someone else know they matter. It's, it's enough. We are enough right here and right now. So I'd like you to take that energy in this moment. Just breathe in and join me in a prayer right now as you unfold yourself and open up to that greater good that's present right here in this moment, that invisible force of love, the law of goodness that's at work, working for us right here and right now. As we open up and know the truth, that this spirit, this energy, this potentiality is all there is. It's all around us. It's through us. It's in us in this and every moment. And as we breathe this in and be aware, open our awareness to understand there's something so much greater at work right now that's working for us in this moment. We allow our hearts to open, our minds to melt, that we can feel the activity of spirit working through us. And we feel that spark, that little divine urge that calls us to something more. That little, that little urge that tells us you are forgiven, you are creative. This is a new time for us in this moment. And our job right here is to know as life works for us, in us, as us, and through us, we set our intention in this moment. And right now, I simply, in the middle of this prayer, would like you to fill in what it is you want for yourself right now. Is it love, compassion, friendship, joy, prosperity? What is it? Plant that in there. Recognize, claim, harness that little seed and allow it to grow within you. And know with absolute faith that your prayer is heard right here, right now, in this moment. Your prayer is heard and you open to receive and be absolutely thankful and grateful for all that is and all that is yet to be. In this moment, we just say, thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We see it done and so it is. If you had any questions, you guys are really groovy. Okay, I want you to remember that. I love you all. Have a happy Labor Day, and we will see you um, soon. Take care. <laughs>